Good morning. It's good to see everybody this morning. If this is your first time visiting with us at Providence, there is a visitor's card on the back of the pew in front of you. If you fill it out, you can give it to myself, the pastor, or uh, leave it in one of the baskets there by the door on your way out. And if there's any way that we can minister to you, please, there's a there's an area to fill that out and let us know. Um, as far as announcements, we just have this Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, midweek Bible study here in the auditorium. Uh, our youth uh, will meet upstairs in the fellowship hall at 7 p.m. as well. Um, and I think that's it. If you'll turn your bulletin over on the back, we have a couple of, of uh, announcements there to share. Uh, please continue to be in prayer for the the family of Mary Wilbanks and the passing of her. Um, and just know that we are praying for y'all. Um, and uh, also the, the family of Daryl White, uh, that's Miss Betty White's late son. Uh, as he, as he uh, passed away, uh, gosh, I don't remember what day it was, Thursday or Friday. Um, I got to read a lot of things about uh, Miss Mary and uh, what a wonderful testimony she had, as well as uh, Brother Daryl White, and what a what a what godly people they were, and, and uh, it was awesome to read those things. But, to, but but more importantly, to know that uh, that they are at home with their with their Savior, and uh, Amen to that. It's hard on this side of of heaven, but uh, it makes heaven just a little bit more sweeter for all of us. Um, with those announcements done, we'll uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father, we do thank you for a beautiful morning. We thank you for the time we had to come out and, and to study your word in Sunday school. And we thank you, Lord, for, for a worship service where we can worship you in song and especially in uh, your precious word. And Father, we lift up these, these two families. Uh, we pray for, for grace and peace and strength. And we, we pray that your spirit would comfort them, Lord, as, as they go through this difficult time, Lord. And, and uh, we do pray for the rest of the service. We'll thank you again for, for all that you've done. And, and we do thank you for your word. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Matthew. Would you stand with me and let's uh, remain standing for a couple of opening songs. The first one is on 386, The Family of God. Thank you. 
And I too welcome you, and it's good to see you today in this service. Our auditory hymn, and just remain seated please, 411. <coughs> to the message in this great hymn of the faith. All four verses. 411, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. <coughs> I too want to make a mention about the passing of Mary Wilbanks and encourage you to continue to be in prayer for Rich and Michelle and for Cole and Jess and Cannon, Paige and Jeff and their children and all other family members and especially uh, let's remember Calvin in our prayers. I'm so glad that I knew Mary She's a lady of grace and charm, sweet, and awesome Christian. And then while we're praying for that family, I want us to pray for the family of Daryl White. Don't you miss Betty White? No. Amen. Yes. Precious lady. She used to ride with us on our senior outings all the time. And she's prayed uh, through her own sickness and for Daryl for many years and we've prayed for Daryl many years after 10 years of battling with, with cancer Aren't, I'm thankful to the Lord that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord and the scripture says that in his presence 
there's fullness of joy. And uh, that one day in his courts, the scripture says, is better than the thousand. Amen. We read in the Old Testament, the saints, when they passed away, it said they were gathered unto their own, unto their family. So I want us to pray for them today. And if some of you noticed in the past few days, there's been another uh, burial tent in the cemetery. And that was uh, the widow of Donald Kennedy. Uh, Donald is, uh, was Ann Kennedy's brother-in-law. They were two, her husband and Donald were, uh, they died in their 50s. Donald was a physician in Adrian, Georgia, and a very close friend to the pastor of the Baptist church there for many years. And this was uh, his widow that has gone also to be with Jesus. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for those who support this local assembly with their finances. Uh, the Lord, your ministry, Lord, giving of their time and their faith, their testimony, their zeal, their love, and grace giving of their financial gifts. And I pray today for the, your favor and your blessings to each one. And I pause now in this service to pray for our nation. These are certainly uncertain times, not only in our nation, but in this world. And we trust our nation to your loving hands. Help our leaders, Lord, as we're taught in the scriptures, exhorted to pray for those in authority over us and leadership. I pray God that they would walk in your light and they would be respectful to the, take, the teachings of sacred script and uh, give us all the strength and the comfort that we need in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. And I remind you that we do not pass an offering plate, but there are some baskets at there at the door on your way out. And if you would like to give financially to the church or if you have a visitor's card you'd like to place in one of the baskets, uh, we would appreciate that. Thank you so very much.
Amen. Great hymn of the faith. I surrender all. Scott, if you and Linda will come. three old songs that ask the same we're going to do one song and uh, it's good to sing with Scott again this simply says somebody loves me Place better. 
Amen. Good to see you folks. Today's Bible lesson, sermon, study is in the book of Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12 and uh, verses 1 through 11. Now I'm thankful that God's word is already anointed. And so I just pray that the Holy Spirit would stir in our hearts and give us spiritual ears to hear with understanding what the Lord has to say to this part of his body in this local assembly today. In Acts chapter 12, a key verse that I want to call your attention to is there in that fifth verse. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Before us today, as we begin and look at the study and the early chapters of the book of Acts, we see that the infant church went through a great ordeal and a great time of persecution. But I'm glad the scriptures does it in there. They also experienced deliverance. And I heard a preacher many years ago said that the early church was not rocked in the cradle of ease nor nursed in the lap of luxury. And that is so true. We all at one time or another go through situations, storms, trials, perhaps persecutions in our own hearts, in our own lives, sometimes in our homes, sometimes in our churches, and certainly sometimes in our nation. And we face situations that are seemingly impossible to deal with. I'm glad that I know whom I have believed in, that I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day, and that I have access to the throne room of heaven, to the very ear of God. And in fact, uh, I, that's my subject title today, is the power of prayer. And I remind you that 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. So I want to encourage us today uh, to look at uh, our lives, situations, and let's use that weapon of prayer. And uh, beginning in the first verse now of the 12th chapter of Acts, says, Now about that time, and you'll find what time we're talking about in the 11th chapter and the 29th and 30th verses when the disciples were gathering together all that they were able to do so and give relief to the assembly, uh, to the church in Judea. They were going through a time of persecution. Uh, there were many that were not receiving the relief and the help that they needed uh, from the synagogue, they had been excommunicated from the synagogue because they were embracing their faith in the man called Jesus Christ. And not only that difficulty, but there was a, a, a dearth in that season of time. And uh, so uh, they sent Barnabas and Saul, whom we know as the Apostle Paul. So about that time, when Herod the king, this is uh, King Herod Agrippa, he's the grandson of Aristobulus, and uh, he's uh, the, also in relationship to Herod the Great, the one that killed all the babies. You remember that? And it says that he stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. In other words, he, he, that word vex means to torture certain of the church. So Herod is operating under demonic resources. 
un under the, un the, uh, the power of Satan. And I remind you again, as I did last week in John 10, 10, Satan comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. And so he's warring against this local assembly. And the second verse says, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. He did that to find favor with the Jewish leaders of his day. And it seems that he found favor. And so he proceeds there in the third verse and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter, Simon Peter. But then look at that next phrase. Then were the days of unleavened bread. I want to remind us today that there's a Romans 8.28 in operation. There is divine intervention. Sometimes you would call it divine interruption. But God showing us in this text that he is sovereignly in control. James has been killed and now Simon Peter is being arrested and Herod has the same plans and no doubt that uh, He's announced it throughout the region that he's fixing to put on a show, that he's fixing to uh, take Simon Peter's life, and uh, God sovereignly is in control. Because during these seven days of celebration, you could not have a trial, you could not have an execution, and so God is working behind the scenes. Aren't you glad when God works behind the scenes? I like it though I, I may not always see his fingerprints or his footprints in the sand, but I'm glad that I know that he's there. And so the, it says that he apprehended him and put him in prison, <coughs> delivered him to uh, four quartarians of soldiers, 16 soldiers to keep him and demonic intention that after Passover, uh, that the Bible says to bring him forth to the people. So this looks like a helpless and a hopeless situation. And Simon Peter is in prison, and the scripture says in that key verse, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And uh, the scripture says, teaches us simply that God is in control. I am so glad that all the forces, the evil forces of the world and the demonic forces of the devil that has not greater power than the great power of he that lives within us, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm glad that you and I have access by power, by the weapon of prayer. One, I heard one preacher many years ago said that the weapon of prayer is a highway to heaven. It, it's certainly a blood-stained path that we can trot upon and uh, to reach out to the Lord when you can't do anything else. Sometimes we have situations, maybe you have a, a, a friend that you just, you've tried to talk to them and you, you can't get through to them or even a family member or a co-worker or whatever it might be that you've tried to, to touch their heart with the things of God, and when the door is closed and the ear is not listening, thank God that we can pray. And I've seen many uh, a person rescued, a, a spiritual rescue operation by the power of prayer. And, uh, and I know somewhere along the way and, and through the years that I may have mentioned to you, uh, uh, ended up being a... Southern Baptist evangelist, J.O. McLeod, but his mother uh, stayed on her knees before the Lord and during the years of his waywardness and she prayed day and night and he was still living at home with her, but uh, she, would, she would be on her knees at a straight chair in the kitchen praying for him till he walked in the house, whatever the hour was. And one night he came in and he reached over and put his arms around his mother and he said, this is the last night.
that you've got to worry about me. He said, I found the Lord tonight. Well, actually, the Lord found him. And he said, I've given my heart to the Lord. I've surrendered to the Lord. And uh, he went on and used his life in a marvelous way for the Lord Jesus in revival campaigns and Bible conferences and pastored some of the greatest churches uh, in Georgia and, 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 and Florida. And just a mighty man of God. He's going to be with the Lord now. But I thank God for a praying mother. I thank God that you and I can pray uh, a rescue operation for somebody that's, uh, that's going through a difficult time, whether they're wayward or whatever it is. And sometimes we pray about things, we use that weapon uh, of prayer, and it just doesn't seem to turn out the way we want it to. But God is still in control. And, and there's a sovereign God that whatever the reason and whatever valley, whatever storm we go through, I'm glad that He gives sustaining grace that I can make it through. And besides that, it's not over yet, is it? There's a trump going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to be raised. We which are alive, we remain. We're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm so glad that I've read the last chapter. And then over there in verse number 6, in verse number 6, the scripture reads, The same night when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter, Simon Peter, was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And my first question would be, how can you sleep through a situation like this? Have you ever spent a, a restless night just wringing your hands and walking the floor? You ever spent you, a season of just worrying and worrying and worrying, making yourself sick? God help us to glean from Acts chapter 12 and on the authority of 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scriptures got some profit in it for us and it can minister to us. God help us to glean and read and study and learn to walk in the experience that in seasons like this that we can pray unto God for a specific need in our life. And that God would bring us to the place that I could get the rest that my <coughs> physical body needs to go through the trials and difficulties of life. And so when I read that, that Peter was sleeping, I certainly began to ask myself the question, remind me, why is it that Peter can sleep through this situation? And then I'm reminded that God had made a promise to him over there in John chapter 21. And he had said to him, Verily I say unto you, uh, in 21 verse 18, When you were young, you girded yourself and walked where you would. But when you shall be old, you shall stretch forth your hands, and another shall gird you and carry you where you would go. How do you get rest out of that? Because Simon Peter knows that God has promised him a long life. And so this is not the season. This is not the time. Simon Peter can sleep because he's familiar with a Savior, a Redeemer that has said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He can sleep because there in Acts chapter 5, the Bible says that another time they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison and the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth. He knows that he's been in that situation before. If you and I will just look back over our life, there have, it, Jeremiah said, it's a land of hills and valleys. There are going to be some mountaintops, but there are going to be some valleys. There, there's going to be seasons that we, the, the, the storm is going to be uh, at rest. But there are going to be times that the angry waves of fear and doubt and frustrations of the boisterous uh, weather of the water of life is going to combat against us. But I've been there before. 
And if God tarries his coming and I live a little longer, there'll be another storm. There'll be another trial. There'll be another difficult situation. But I remind myself that God has brought me through it. One hymn writer said, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And so when I, when I see these reasons that Simon Peter could rest and sleep, and I remind myself that I can, then that's those seasons that I glean and learn and understand just a little more when the psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Look at verse number 7, please. In verse number 7, and I'm going to take these verses beginning in the 7th verse, and I want us to just look at, we're going to find application for our life. Now you know where you're at today. You know what's going on in your heart and in your soul and in your life. I want to glean from the steps, from the pattern that's set before us. And, and just walk through these closing verses and, and see how God led Simon Peter and worked in his life and how, give application how God works in ours. Beginning there in the seventh verse, and Peter is resting, he's asleep. In fact, he's sound asleep. And the Bible says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Now, I'm, I'm thankful for reading uh, throughout the Old Testament and during the Gospels before you get to Paul's epistles. I, I'm thankful for what I read about the ministry of angels. And I'm thankful to know what the ministry of angels and we, the body of Christ, are going to have after the rapture of the church. But I, as I read about what this angel did, I'm thankful that I have the Holy Spirit leading me and guiding me. The Holy Spirit, as I said last Sunday, when we prayed the last prayer, turn out the lights and walk away from this building, I have, I don't need an angel. I have the Holy Spirit who has made His dwelling in this vessel of clay. And so what the angel did, the Holy Spirit does for us. And a light shined in the prison. And I'm thankful that that light, the Bible says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not, could not stop it. And I'm glad for the light of God's Word to lead me. The Bible says also, and he smote Peter. He sound asleep. He shook him. He woke him up on the side. Raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And God begins to do a work. And his chains fell off from his hands. You know, if we just get in the word, rely upon the Holy Spirit, it would do a great unshackling in our lives. The devil wants to keep us so bound and in a state of confusion, uh, in, in the bondage, I rest in His Word. It gives me sustaining grace. And I find peace in troubled times. The chains fell off. The angel said unto him, Gird yourself. Prepare yourself. Today, if, if you have a need, just ask the Holy Spirit to start preparing you for victory. Start preparing your life, your home, our church, our nation. Let's start praying for preparation. Gird yourself, bind on your sandals, and so he did. And he said unto him, cast your garments about you and follow me. And the scripture says he went out and followed him. I want to give you some good news. The good news is all the, in the Gospels and the book of Acts and the Old Testament, when God gives a commission, when God gives a commandment, when God says, do this, you know, I like it so much that uh, those scriptures talk about thy shout. And then Paul comes along in his epistles and he says, you should. 
You know the good news for us in the body of Christ today? He is leading us by His grace and His mercy and the power of His Word. I, I, as I yield to Him and watch His Word work in my life, He that hath begun a good work will complete it. God is leading us. God is in control. I'm not in control. I'm not striving. That's like, that's like what happened at salvation. The wages of sin is death. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth destruction. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We don't measure up. And man can do the best that he can. And he still doesn't measure up. That's why he needs a Savior. And I have a Savior who came and lived a, a life without spot, without blemish, in perfection, and died on the cross of Calvary, gave his life in my stead and shed his blood. And now when God looks at me on the authority of 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit I've been baptized into his body, I'm in him. And he sees the righteousness of the Son of God. It's not that thy shout, it's that we should be following him. And his Holy Spirit is leading us. Now in other words, if I'm not going in the right direction, there's something wrong with me. There's something not working. We need, to, we need to, to, to look again at the Scriptures about salvation. God has started a work. And God is going to complete it. Now God may have to drag us sometimes. And, and God has to shake us. But I'm going to tell you, God's going to get done what God wants to get done. In my heart, in my life, in our church, in our nation... God is leading. So the Bible says in verse number 9, the experience that Peter was having, and he went out and followed him, and uh, it says, and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angels. He thought he saw a vision. You know, it is so difficult sometimes to transition from the natural to the spiritual. That's, we, you know, it's hard to kick against the pricks. And when, when God's leading us in the spiritual, it's just hard for us to recognize it sometimes. Take every trouble that you have, every problem, every burden that you have, and today, quit trying to work it out yourself. Quit trying to follow. Just let Him lead. Let God finish the work that He's doing. And let God take every situation in our life. If we deal with it in the natural, we're not going to have the favor of grace and the blessings. We're not going to recognize it. But if I let Him lead and He's in control, this is God's thing, this is God's work, God's doing this, then He's going to transition it into the spiritual. And it's in the spiritual that our warfare, that the weapons of our warfare work. The weapons of prayer and the weapons of faith, it operates in the spiritual. So the Bible says when they, when they were past the first and the second ward, so he's in the inner prison, and they came unto the iron gate. Remember, Peter's following. God's going to take care of it. Remember, the Holy Spirit's leading us. Those obstacles that get in the way, God's going to take care of it. And it says, They came unto the iron gate that leads into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, for with the angel departed from him. There are miraculous things happening here. And here's the last verse. The eleventh verse. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent His angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod. So I'm going to ask you a question today. Let's just start with salvation. Do you know of a surety? Do you know of a certainty that the Lord has done a great work in you? I hear so much 
on television, ministers, radio. I hear so many applications about salvation and it greatly disturbs me. When you go, go to websites of our Southern Baptist churches, and if you looked at every plan of salvation in all of our Southern Baptist churches, you'll see mass confusion. Some people say you got to pray this, some you got to pray that, some you got to uh, repent of your sins. What if I forget one? That'd be a mess. To step up in at the door of heaven and try to get in. And, and folks are still putting, they put that verse of Scripture. Uh, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us. Folks, I'm going to tell you today, salvation is so simple. And if you want the certainty of salvation and the surety of it, the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that if we believe in His death, His burial, and His resurrection, and if we Southern Baptists believe what we say we believe, in our doctrine of faith. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. There's no works on our part. He's already done the work. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, when you hear the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection, and you believe it, you trust in it, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. It is faith alone that saves us. And the audacity of man to try to mix something with faith rather than trusting only in his works and puts our works into it, that's an abomination to the Word of God. I'm glad today I'm saved by grace through faith. Amen. It's his work. His leading. Do you have that surety today? Do you, do you believe in your heart of hearts for your only hope of salvation is to believe in His death, burial, and resurrection? That's the gospel. <coughs> and then I ask you today, do you have the certainty and the assurance that God's working in your life? How we have that is we have a peace that absolutely pass understanding. We've got a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. We just have a rest in our souls. I don't have all the answers. I don't need to understand everything yet, but my Savior understands it all. And uh, I'm trusting in Him. His finished work. And whatever storms, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I haven't looked at the weather report yet. I did look at the weather report this morning and it's 76 down in Vero Beach, Florida. And the sun is shining. And, uh, and I don't know, but when I walked outside the first time this morning, I said, it's cold. And I went back in the house and I said, Linda, you stay in the car. I, and that's what my heart said. Go crank the car up. But I... <laughs> But I got out of the natural and the spiritual and I went in and I said, if you'll wait just a few minutes. I said, I'll go crank the car, get the seat warmers on and get the car warmed up and then you can come out. My, I am an awesome husband. <laughs> Absolutely. But I get no credit for it whatsoever because God read my heart. I wanted her to go open the, the car up and get it ready. <coughs> Listen to me. If you have, if you're trusting in the Lord today, don't let the devil defeat you. He wants you in the inner prison. He wants you bound. He wants you shackled. He wants you to walk in fear. God wants us to walk in faith. And Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I'm hearing, I'm trusting, I'm resting, I'm depending upon, I'm standing on His Word. I'm going to walk in faith. So whatever you face today, tomorrow, this coming week, just say in the name of Jesus, I, I'm walking by faith. God's going to do this. And then would you dare, one, one closing passage for application for us. 
Would you dare be bold enough to believe this? Paul said in Ephesians, Now unto Him who is able, He's the source, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. It's beyond our comprehension. According to the power that works in us. The power is the Word of God working in us. Unto Him be glory in the church, which is the body of Christ. I'm not trying to build a messianic kingdom. God is building His body. By Christ Jesus, throughout all ages, world without end, that's eternal, Amen. I'll follow Jesus. No turning back. I've just decided. And His Holy Spirit and His Word helps me to do so. Would you stand with me for prayer as we make ready for a closing invitation? The Lord is going to come. Lead us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank You for Your Word today. And I thank You, Father, that we can rest in it, stand upon it. And I thank You for Your Word working. You're an awesome God. Help us to be teachable. Help us, Lord, to desire more truth from You. Help us, Father, to, to just have a hunger to know what the Scriptures teach. May we not listen to the philosophies of man, but through the divine, infallible word that you've given to us. If there be any in this house today that do not know you as their Lord and their Savior, I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, that they would come and let me show them in the Scriptures what it means to be biblically saved. And then, Father, I pray for everyone in the house today that has a burden, a hurt in their heart, in their life, a struggle they're going through, in Jesus' name. Father, may it be moved out of the natural into the spiritual. And I thank you for your work that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Page 305. <laughs>
I like great hymns of the faith, and I like it when we can find Scripture in some of them. Truth in some of the verses. Anybody else got a word before we close? Matthew, any more announcements or anything? Okay. Michael, would you dismiss us, please? Sir. Lord, we thank you for this day today. We thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house, Lord. We just thank you for this message that was brought to us today, Lord. Just ask in your name that we, we go throughout this week in faith, Lord. Uh, faith in you and just help us to walk in your life and be a positive influence to others, everyone we come in contact with, Lord. Just ask all these things in Jesus' name.